press and see us? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, sure what's up? Can. No, you're good. How fun is this? <laughs> the most awkward feeling in the world every <laughs> single time. <laughs> I know it's so weird doing these things. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm like in a corner of my house. Put like a I put like flowers. Yeah, on so like an old part of what so we do is judge you. We 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 always judge our our guests on their background, and um, I mean there it's is weird. that bouquet of flowers. Yeah, <laughs> and what's that? An exercise ball back there? Yeah. All right, a Swiss ball in it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, flowers and sit ups. Let's go. <laughs> Like I'm basically in like a like a storage closet. I have no interest. What is happening in the home? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and and, I don't know. and what's crazy is like it's not getting better. I mean, it's actually probably getting worse at this point. I figured by now we'd be used to it, or like it would. It, no. I, it's just no. always and I just time. was reading this other thing about like how we're supposed to be careful of like how to plan for a winter pandemic, like oh, pand of, like. Winter time in the pandemic, That's and it's like I I can't I'm I mean God, I, we can't even our world is on fire <laughs> in every capacity, mm -hmm. even literally in some it. regards. Oh, how about those pine cones back there too? Boy, you really you dressed it up for us. Is that what those are back there? They're not pine cones. They're like little pieces. They're little lumps. They're like little tiny sculptures all over the place. Just beautiful. I mean, this is like a whole studio. I would I've been quilting in here. I have like my paint set up. You have no idea if we could if you could see this side. I have like an entire other world. Is quilting life. is quilting a new hobby or is that something you've done? Or is that is that like, all right, all right I got to do something during quarantine. I'm a quilt. Um, no, like I've always like, I've always like, I've always done, I've always kind of made things like that. But this is the first time that I'm actually spending time doing. You know, what's very funny is I was uh, just kind of searching your name on Twitter before we came on. And I think you have, not you personally, right? Yeah. It's, it's so a we blast. were stalking. We, but we were stalking. <laughs> enter a room here and people say, so we were just searching your name on Twitter. <laughs> well, the one is actually, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Twitter where nothing gets, you know, uh, crazy or inflammatory or it's, weird at all. It's, it's totally exceptionally normal. apropos because it, uh, I believe the account is called like Taylor Schilling's PR company or whatever. It's obviously not real. Um, but the no. tweet was Taylor Schilling gives out major Leslie Nope vibes, and Leslie Nope loved to quilt. Big quilter. <laughs> Leslie, wait, I want to Google who. Who is that? It's uh, Amy Poehler's character on Parks and Rec. It's a good thing. Don't worry. Oh, 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 oh! Amy Poehler's character on Parks and Rec. Oh, interesting. I, I wouldn't come in on Twitter with I some negativity. Know. That's not me. <laughs> That's not even something that I want. I want to know, but thank you. <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is now, just so. a, a hellscape that we probably should have never created. It's one of those things where it's like, what's that quote? Like they they were spending so much time creating it, they never thought about whether or not they should have created it. Twitter just shouldn't exist. Yeah, it's, it's like it's a, a disaster. Have you ever seen? I like have the biggest headache from doing these zooms all the time. Do you get headaches doing these? Well, <laughs> I think I've had a headache pretty much forever. But For it's your just, whole life? yeah, it's just like that's how my head oh. feels. So, sure, I get it. I get it. Um, I have you seen the social dilemma? Yep, yep. Did it freak you out? Mm. It sure did. But I mean, the idea of like Twitter sort of ruining every, I think that's it's speaking more towards Instagram and Facebook. I think Facebook is the problem. And my hope for the world is that. Everybody who's on Facebook eventually just like gets old and you know dies, and then the get the young people are not on Facebook, and maybe that'll be, that'll solve some of the problem, maybe, because Facebook is just a catastrophe. It truly is. It truly is. But I think that that we're, there's no way eventually that will happen. Let's let's hope Dying sooner off. than later. I yeah. didn't watch the social dilemma because it's like I know, I just don't need to know. No, you yeah. know what I mean. Like I know it's unhealthy, right. but. I don't I know. But I mean, you think you know, and then you watch this and you know in a different way. It's well, interesting. It's interesting. I was listening to a podcast, a different thing, but similar theme. And they were talking about how they're listening, not even when you're talking anymore. If they hear you like sneeze and cough, that you'll get ads for like Benadryl and antihistamines. And that if you're crying, yeah. that they'll send you like, I don't know, links to shit that makes you happy. And I'm kind of like on board with that aspect of it. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad to me. Some of it's bad, yeah, invasion of privacy and like the government listening and shit. But if you're gonna send me stuff that's gonna like stop me from crying, okay. 
I mean, I'm all for that. If it didn't like side, like the side effect wasn't kind of like demolishing our democracy. I yeah. Mean, all- <laughs> Yeah. It's, didn't, didn't, it's a big uh, a big bill to pay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, you sent me Benadryl, but also, <laughs> you know, so after war. like a prescription drug, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you think though a civil uh, social dilemma was a little bit of its own like hysteria? I feel like what they were talking about is it kind of became its own. It's like a self fulfilling thing where it's like, all right, well, you almost seem as much propaganda as you're talking about in a way. So you're saying like that they that the that that it was like inflammatory. Yeah, was- I mean, I know it's bad, but the one guy they were like, so what's like the best case scenario? He was like, mm, civil war. I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> calm down, man. <laughs> but I mean, listen, we calm down, man. But like, look around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> They're not wrong. Like nobody. Like I don't. I don't know. Like that. We we haven't been wrong. But I think sure. Like I think that it was kind of meant to be. A little inflammatory. Yeah, I mean, to get the point we, across. It, like, to have like a little bit of a counterpoint. It feels mm-hmm. like, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm totally with you. And I think kind of things like that, they're so deeply curated. We can't look at them as necessarily factual, but it's kind of helpful to have some information to counterbalance the messaging we get all right. the time. That's, that's my main problem with, I, I've stopped watching documentaries for two reasons. Number one, oh. I like to watch mindless stuff. And, <laughs> and that, that's really the big one, if we're going to be honest here. But yeah. number two is they have become so like mainstream that yeah. they become false almost. They become, yeah. there's so much fabricated. You'll watch one and then you'll find out that there was like a huge missing piece yeah. where they just didn't tell you because they try and make it so I salacious. Mean, that's why, exactly. But that that's actually, to that point was why I was so like, interested in the social dilemma and then i wanted to go and like go, you know do more research on the redhead you know i forget mm-hmm. what his name yeah i know he I, was, a, uh, war, was that um guy. was that um Trist- tristan i think so that was yeah, so yeah. Like, your name's that tristan really- dude <laughs> tristan <laughs> oh <laughs> i don't know i mean he he was specific about pronunciation <laughs> and more power to him you know what i mean um but that notion that we're all living in our own Truman show like yeah. kind of curated the content is so curated which is like exactly the problem with documentary like it's everything right. it's just so well curated. I, I have a uh I have an irrational fear that I'm living like the actual Truman show not like a metaphorical individual one that yeah, you're right. all actors and maybe that's like the most narcissistic thing in the world <laughs> but I also just get so deeply nervous every time I'm like I, I, every time I look goofy or I'm watching porn or something weird, I'm like, you're all watching. You're all watching me. Just tell me. Why don't you tell me the truth? So, yeah, I'm a crazy person. So whatever. Uh, what I what I do like, though, so there's so many documentaries and like things that can scare you and shit. And then I feel like right around this time of year, there's like good, fun TV and shit to watch with the, the yeah. season and Halloween and I feel like that's what's going on with Monsterlands, the new show you're on in Hulu, where it's just like, get back to basics. It's that time of year. We're going to write some scary shit and we're gonna I have don't, some fun and scare you. And, have, and like, it's it's fun to watch. I'm very scared of scary stuff. And I didn't have, I, I've got, I can't wait to watch the show. I'm, 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 I'm serious about that. That's not just some. He was scared <laughs> of the trailer. That's not some interview pampering, but I was scared. It's a scary show. It's really scary. See what I think is, so I'm not like a, I like move in and out of like kind of being interested in horror. I've had moments of like thinking old school horror was really cool, but I'm not like, that's not like what I click on, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, this show is the way that they make our sort of inner demons, they externalize them into like our, Uh what you're talking about, like those, those, like kind of the like, the things we all experience, the shadow of our, of our, all of our inner lives is alive and well. But they kind of that kind of that that becomes the monster. Yeah. That's the Mary scariest Lock. monster I, possible. That really is. Like, I'm not scared of the. I'm not scared of Jason. I'm not scared of Gore. No. I'm scared of just what's inside here. The only th- I know. the saving I know. grace. That's why this is so compelling, and it's still like scary, but like not it's overwhelming. It, yeah. It, it just. It's it's more interesting to me than a jump scare. That, it's like a mix. Hundred percent. It's when, it's but it's it's the one. It's the scary that sticks with you and and possibly alters your life. Yes. Because you yeah. start thinking about yourself in a completely different thing. Like Monsterland could potentially be a life changing show you watch because it just changes how you think about yourself. Forget about the social dilemma. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna revolutionize the world. The only the best part about. The best part about inner demons is that they're inner. If you externalize them, it's a fucking catastrophe. That's or 
Yeah. Or does then do we does they let the games of healing begin Ooh. once we externalize them? That may be okay. Now, when the trailer starts, um, Caitlin Devers, I don't believe I caught her name in the trailer, but she says something along the lines of, "When you're born, you could choose." who you are. You're a bank robber or a doctor. I forget what you said. You can be happy or sad. And basically like how, uh, what, 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 what self are you being? Do you think you're being your best self right now? Right Ta now? Is Taylor Schilling her best self? I my um, exercise ball and <laughs> you see, I tried so hard to put flowers out for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is the reality of my life. <laughs> Intentionally, like purely like a, like, like a poorly curated thing. <laughs> But then you see the truth too. When you were yeah, like, a, I, I think so for sure. When you were like a little girl in like uh, kindergarten, like kindergarten graduation, and it said, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" Do you remember what you thought? A, a little a pioneer woman. Oh, what the a hell pioneer. does a pioneer woman mean? Like, like living on I the frontier? Like Laura Ingalls Wilder. Wow. I wanted a bonnet and I wanted an apron and I wanted to like, you know, like boil a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Boil, like that was all so quaint until we got to boiling a say. mammal. Yeah. <laughs> is that part of Monsterland coming out? Is that a scene in the new show? Goodness gracious! Boil no, a pig. When, when I was actually looking, I saw Caitlin Devers uh, in the trailer, and I was like, "Where do I recognize her from?" And I kind of went through her IMDb, and I got low enough where I stumbled upon something where it was just like range. You know, like I was like, Caitlin Devers is in uh, Monsterland, and also starred in Barney. What what two show what two projects do you think you've done where you're like I can't believe I was in both of these done it all. <laughs> That's so funny though. <laughs> she started in Barney. Yeah. I was watching her in Barney. I was right. obsessed with Barney. Um, I've done so much weird. I mean, what have I done? I mean, I would like I. What I think of what I'm thinking of in this moment is is the time where I was in New York and sent on some commercial audition where they asked me to like skip down a park bench. Like they brought it like a park bench into like this warehouse space and they wanted me to like hop on it, sort of like skip, like everything, like I'm skipping. skipping. It was an antidepressant commercial. Was, <laughs> that's what people do, skip down park benches. And then there was a mannequin at the end and they wanted me to kiss the mannequin and like make out with it a little bit. Like just like a like a like a horrifying like mannequin. <laughs> um, this sounds anyway. like somebody's deep dark cake that, or something. That, this that is that nuts. Was, like that was something horrible. But that that I I think of that and I think I can't believe I was there and now I'm here. That I don't know how that bridge was crossed, but it was. Those are definitely two different two different <laughs> genres. I'll say. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've done so much weird but, shit. Before, uh, before Orange is the New Black, what, like, if that didn't happen, what do you think, where do you think you'd be? Oh, I mean, see, this is the thing. Before Orange is the New Black, I've been after, so I went to NYU. I went to grad school to learn how to, like, breathe out of my armpit and be an actor. <laughs> and so I went to grad school. But, like, after grad school, I was acting like I was making money and like paying my mm -hmm. rent and groceries. you were fine like yeah yeah so I felt like I'd always felt like I was like living the life right right so you was, never had I that was, struggle like <laughs> like, like uh the um I, mean, I didn't have the struggle but like I was like I probably would have just kept you know yeah. I was just like I, I love doing what I do you know so I was like uh, when when that happened I was like yeah but like I was I've been doing that I think know? that's the biggest like you made it moment when not like the the massive contract, not the massive show on the massive paycheck, just like the okay, I'm doing what I enjoy and I, I make enough to live. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And like, like when we first started making enough like blogging, where I'm like, I don't have to that was think, always my goal. Think of yeah, like, all right, I'm good now. Like, I, I it's, it's yeah. you know, I, I'm not, I don't have some lavish lifestyle and all that stuff, but like, I'm, I'm doing what I like. And I can sustain the consistency. Myself on it. Yeah. So I made it. Well, yeah. I, I was looking at, uh, yeah, I told mean, that was my experience totally. Just okay. like, I feel, yeah, I, I, like that was everything. Like, what, what more could I possibly have wanted? When, uh, when Shit's Creek cleaned up at the Emmys this year, and they, everyone was telling the story about Annie Murphy was like, her house had burned down, and she was like, "I'm done with that. I'm not doing any more auditions." And then she landed yeah. Shit's Creek. But now Shit's Creek's over, and it's like, yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it was like her life was like truly rock bottom, and she had said to herself, "Like, if I don't get this, I'm 
you know, going to go do like a regular job or whatever wow. and then lands the life of role of a lifetime. And now, you, you know, you would assume that this opens a lot of doors and stuff. But, you know, when you don't, when you haven't had that consistency the way you landed, it's it's I mean, it's a scary industry if, if you're kind of like going like Hail Mary to Hail Mary, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing I think actors are I think we're all living in a space of absolute uncertainty mm. most of the time. But like actors just have to deal with the reality of that. You know, <laughs> like we That's other people, tough. like when you have like a nine to five job, you can kind of like big like you still might get hit by a bus. I mean, every <laughs> yeah. like nothing is certain, like nothing is in your control. But you we can kind of like fake it but like it, you as an actor you just can't you you are like in constant constantly confronting the fact that there is no certainty i mean i hear like yeah is there as an actor is there is this is this your first time on a set of like this magnitude of a horror movie or of a thriller psychological however it's classified i mean I did a movie once that was like a, a very weird horror movie. Um, that was another m moment in my life. That but wasn't the making out with the mannequin. No, it was something. <laughs> there was something scarier than that. Okay. <laughs> Is there a different <laughs> vibe on it? It's, a, like, it's just a terrifying to think about, like the like the like left turn, like the choose your own adventure where that could have gone. Yeah. So um, I. Uh, no, not one that was well written like this and like kind of with the caliber of cast and the director and the way it was set up. I mean, this is this was like a, a real deal show. I mean, it's mm -hmm. beautifully written. Is it's the is really the vibe super different on these things? Like like is it uh, are they actively trying to get you unsettled and things like that? Like I, I remember hearing about like Jared Leto on when he's the Joker and he's trying to like mess with everyone's brains by like sending mm -hmm. them like condoms and stuff like that. Yeah, The Exorcist was one like that too. They made the set really cold and they used to like make banging noises to keep people on edge. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, no. <laughs> no, we're normal. That was weird shit. Yeah. Forget Jared Leto, that psychopath. No. <laughs> but it is, I think there's been like maybe, I feel like American Horror Story and House on Haunting Hill, like uh, there has maybe been a little, uh, like a little bit of a revival or a renaissance or whatever you want to call it of these kind of shows that I think really work. And it's like not yeah. gory or like too gratuitous, but it's well written, like you said. And it's like fun, you know, and it, it comes out this time of year yeah. and everyone wants to be scared. It works out really well. Yeah, I think it really does. And I think I think there is something where I mean, this show just does it on the nose. But I think in general, kind of like these shows allow us to just in sort of a safe way, confront really shadowy parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's fun. Right. That's good. That's not like it's it's a great mix between like it's it's titillating. Yeah. You know, like not it's you, you it can become mindless because it's so all it's all encompassing. That's how I feel about horror stuff. It's it, it becomes mindless because it's so consuming. It right. like consumes all of you watching it. It's so. The, uh, does the anthology aspect of it allow you to kind of change how you approach it? Like, do you just let it fly? Like, fuck yeah, it, whatever coming back. Yeah. I think that like the idea of having a different cast for each episode, it was just like everybody had a juicy little part and you come in for a couple of weeks and it's like done. Mm -hmm. And the, the like weight of the world is not on one person's shoulder. And it was just such a fun job for that reason, knowing that it was like, this great contained thing and you could kind of go in, go as, as go like full all, all the way. And then, um, you know, you're done. That's it. Yeah. You just leave it all in the field. Well, we're, we're about to uh, we're about to go down a, a dark path with the game that we call Answer the Internet, and where we oh we're gonna hit you with questions that are from the deepest darkest corners <laughs> of the World Wide Web. Are you ready? I mean, best of luck to all of us. <laughs> Let the inner demons externalize here. First yeah. one. Let the inner demons externalize. Truly, really, that's what this is. Would you rather have fing uh, toes for fingers or fingers for toes? Toes for fingers or fingers for. Toes for fingers. Toes for fingers. Toes? Oh, little, no, Little Taylor. stumps. <laughs> How do you eat? <laughs> look, at, like, look at me trying to open up my bottle with my toe fingers and shit, you know? Oh, no. No. Oh. <laughs> at least, like, fingers, fingers for I toes. I can't buy it. I think having, you could actually kind of use them, but, like... Like, I could imagine trying to use them, but, like, if my fingers were toes, I'd be flip-flopping all over the place. Yeah, you just get a size, like, 13 shoe, and you just run around. It's like no You can hide those, at least. You got a big clown shoe, and you're good to go. 
Also, I have baby fingers, so I, I have, <laughs> have toes for fingers. I think it's about aesthetics and more about functionality, but continue. All right, let's see. Toes for fingers, thank you very much. <laughs> if you could have footage from one memorable moment in your life, what would that video be? Which, by the way, is an interesting question. Like, going one forward, kids are going to be like, we already have all the footage. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. That's weird. But I maybe that maybe that mannequin moment. That's, yeah. That's, that, someone's got to have it somewhere, I'd right? i see it. I know that. I don't I know mean, about you. But. On the camera, like on a, like a camcorder somewhere. I mean, someone has to. But I, I, if you, that got pulled out of the recesses of my brain. I can't. I Are you you're sure it. that wasn't like a just a nightmare that you manifested? <laughs> like that was a paid gig? Was that some weirdo? Like, <laughs> no, that was real. That was... <laughs> That was real. Um, would you rather have one song stuck in your head for the rest of your life or never be able to hear music again? Wow. I don't know. That's tough. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard because there are some songs I could see myself. Uh, Ferris, Hollywood's Not America just came to my brain. Don't know why it's on the <laughs> Sad Boy Season playlist. Um but like, there's also the the aspect of, the, of fear where that could just, I mean, that could drive you crazy. You One go, you song go forever. absolutely insane. I mean, I think I'd lose my mind. That's why I would say no music. I think I would go crazy. I think eventually, like, if I couldn't stop, eat, even if you loved I, the song, I I would, even yeah. if you loved it, you'd hate it. And if it was like Smash Mouth All Star, you would go bananas. Yeah. I mean, isn't that also torture? Isn't yeah, that that's what they do, right? They blast that's, music and just that's like upgrade. That's how they torture. It's mm -hmm. sound. It's torture. I think they leaned. If, I, if zero block thirty, zero dark thirty taught me anything, it's they lean towards the heavy metal, mm -hmm. which isn't a genre yeah. I'd be dabbling in here. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it's it's definitely a torture method. Um, yeah. Would you rather lose all your old memories or never be able to make new ones? Lose all my old memories or never be able to make new ones. Wow, these are so good. I think in 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 the name of being in the name of forward motion, you know, lose the old ones. Everyone's gone, huh? I don't think must you can must do be nice that, to be though. someone who's been in your life at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, not interested. <laughs> but you would never like. I don't think you can like. Uh, I feel like so much of like your decision making is based on the past, where it's like, well. I remembered last time I did that, like I got hurt or I got injured or yeah. I, you know, and that's, pfft, yeah. That makes me want to lose all my memories. That's, but I think that that would be like absolutely, that would, like that's liberating. A, that's a full freedom. Yeah. yeah. You, you get to become a whole new person. Like you forgot where you came from. Yeah, I did. Yeah, completely. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, completely, completely gone. Um, all right. We got two more for you here. Would you rather drink exclusively hot drinks for the rest of your life? Or you have to move to and stay in forever, Boise, Idaho. Oof. Oh my God, that's a question. There's no question. There's no, I'd like, you know, I'd be cozy all the time. All right. Like, well, like, like, all right, you're working out, right? You just ran like a half marathon and then it's like. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. Like a hot coffee, you know? Yeah, that's horrible. But I would do, I would prefer it. And no, no shade to the people in Boise. I was going to say, you I just, you just there. lost all 45 fans in Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. Goodbye. All right. Last one. Yes. What is one rumor, true or false, that you'd like to spread about yourself? I would like to spread the rumor that in my in my off time I am a <laughs> and I'm just a I'm a shepherdess in upstate New York. <laughs> I'm boiling pigs. Living off the land. <laughs> I can just see the TMZ headline now. Yeah. Taylor Schilling boils pigs. <laughs> I'm just a sweet pioneer woman. <laughs> <laughs> just little house on the prairie. I loved the show as a kid. I didn't have any desire to move there, but I enjoyed watching it. <laughs> I know. I know. I read all the books. Obsessed. Obsessed. Well, you, you put the flowers out, so you're on your way. You did that. All right. All right. Great stuff. Thank you so much. So Monsterland is October 2nd on Hulu. It's great for the season. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Very scary. Very uh, titillating, as you said. Titillating. Yes. Thank you so much yes. for the time, as always. Thanks, Thank Taylor. You. It was lovely to see you guys. Bye. See you, see you too. Bye. Bye.